Hey friends, welcome back. This is me, Monica Sharma, and welcome to MS Bio Academy. And today we are going to talk about the discovery of enzymes and the important terms in enzymology. So we are going to cover uh, how the discovery of enzymes happens, who all are involved in this, how the term of enzymes came up, and what are the important terms of the terms used in the enzymology when we study about the enzymes. What are the different terms we are going to use? It. So uh, the discovery started uh, with the Louis Pasteur experiment, and he did a experiment. He was experimenting uh, by doing certain kind of fermentation reactions and he found it that uh, during the process of the fermentation there are certain kinds of uh, substances were involved in it and he named those substances as ferments okay so till that time the enzyme word has not come up it later on then edward butcher came and he actually isolated uh, these uh, substances which louis pasteur has found it out from the yeast and uh, he called them as zymase complex okay so that he uh, has been called so till this time also the enzyme term has not come up so edward butcher also gave the term zymase complex and he isolated from the yeast and then later on kunhe come and kunhe has uh, later on gave the term enzyme based on the uh, findings of the edward butcher that he has isolated from the yeast so basically enzyme means it is from literally meaning enzyme is from yeast so it has come from yeast that's why he named the word enzyme so this is about the discovery part now let's talk about the different terms which are being used in the enzymes in the enzyme chapter or the enzymology so enzymes are basically proteins we know that right now cofactor in the enzymes we have already discussed in our previous video that uh, certain enzymes they get activated by its own they are categorized as a simple enzyme but there are certain kind of a conjugated enzymes are also present which need certain kind of a helpers in the form of cofactor or coenzyme for them to get activated so what is cofactor cofactor basically nothing but the non protein part of the enzyme you can say okay and uh, there are two types of cofactor inorganic or organic cofactor now inorganic cofactors are generally the inorganic metal ions for example zinc magnesium and iron ions while the organic cofactors are mainly the coenzymes okay so uh, for example coenzyme a now what are holoenzyme holoenzyme is a combination of protein part plus non protein part that is called as a holoenzyme we know that non protein part is what non protein part is the cofactor or the coenzyme we are talking about and the protein part we know it is called as an apoenzyme so that is what the next definition shows that apoenzyme is basically the protein minus cofactor that also you can see right so protein part is basically what protein part we, we are talking about if the cofactor is not bounded to the enzyme then it is called as a apoenzyme okay but if the cofactor is bound to the protein then it is called as a function holoenzyme and these apoenzymes are basically inactive state inactive enzyme so you can see inactive protein part these are uh, but in order for them to get activated they need to be bounded with a non protein part or the cofactor or the coenzyme and then it will form a functional active part uh, form which is known as a holoenzyme clear now what are isoenzymes isoenzymes uh, is the term which is given to uh, those kind of enzymes which uh, uh, have the multiple forms of enzyme which are occurring in the same species so for uh, there are multiple forms of the enzymes are present uh, but they will be present in the same species only then it will be called as the isoenzymes or you can say they are going to uh, carry out a multiple of reactions that one particular uh, reaction is being carried out by the many enzymes then it is called as the isozymes then ribozymes uh, as i've told you that ribozymes means those enzymes which are made up of rna rather than the proteins so generally we know that enzymes are made up of proteins but if it is made up of only rna then it is called as a ribozymes since they have a catalytic function that's why they have been categorized under the as the zymes in the form of uh, enzymes now active site is basically those specific site at which the enzyme react with the substrate so if this is particularly let's suppose this is the shape of an enzyme so uh, basically uh, these substrates if uh, this is the substrate so what will happen this substrate will come and bind to this particular site only so the amino acids which are present here they are going to link with this particular substrate molecule and uh, this is this is like a complete lock and fit kind of a model so just imagine if you are uh, fixing uh, one particular key into a one particular lock 
so that is how it is so this is the active site where the enzyme react with the substrate molecule that is called as the active site of an enzyme now zymogen or pro enzyme they are term which are being used for the inactive state of the enzyme if the enzyme is in the inactive state then it will be called as zymogen or pro enzymes substrate means the substance on which the enzyme acts so whatever substance the enzyme is acting that is will be called a substrate for example the amylase it acts on starch so starch is basically a substrate for amylase so that is how it is so these are the different terms which are mainly used uh, when we are going to study about the enzymes